We're gonna have feet directly under our hips and then we're gonna take a half step out with each foot. So feet are just outside of hip width. You might wanna start with a little bit of external rotation. So toes are pointed outwards. Pointed outwards, they're not faced right in front of you. One thing that we want to remind ourselves with any kind of squat variation is we always want our knees tracking in the same direction as, this, as the toes. So my knees have the same kind of external rotation. If my toes were to be facing straight ahead, my knees would also track. We want to avoid, especially when we're starting with no weight, we want to avoid our knees tracking out of line of the toes or getting any of that like inward knee movement or movement within the lift. Remember that a lot of these notes that I'm gonna give you in the bodyweight squat, they still work for the goblet squat and for the barbell squat. So keep them in mind, we're kind of laying the base for our progression. Next, I want you to play around with your weight. This is what it looks like when you have all your weight in your heels and then all your weight in your toes. You wanna to find a balance to where your center of mass is balanced over your midfoot. The midfoot is, guess it, the middle of your foot. So find that midfoot position and have be balanced from the back of your foot and the front of your foot. You might wanna think about three points of contact and then screw in with your heels and kind of claw in the ground with your toes. You wanna have a really active foot and be able to feel yourself pushing away from the ground. Eye gaze is gonna depend on the lifter. For the bodyweight squat, you might wanna just stare at the wall straight in front of you or even find something like a speck of dust or something a couple of feet in front of where you're standing. Next, we're gonna break at the hips and break at the knees at the same time. So break at the same time, lower down to below parallel. I want this part of my leg, my upper leg, to be parallel and a little bit lower. A lot of beginners who aren't yet comfortable with the body weight squat will have, their biggest issue will be getting down there, mobility. So if you have a hard time getting to depth, I want you to run through a couple of drills. First, you can come over to an upright and slowly lower down and just get comfortable in the bottom of the squat. You'll feel a stretch in your inner thighs and when you push up, you should feel some activation in the glutes. That might take a while for you to start to get used to. Try that upright drill where you're just coming down as low as you possibly can and try to sink a little bit lower. If you're still having trouble, a lot of our beginners found that the 90-90 drill helped a lot because this helps with your inward internal rotation and external rotation. So you wanna get in a 90-90 position. So both legs are in 90 degrees in the same, facing the same direction. But this leg is internally rotated, this leg is externally rotated. Try to keep your body upright, but this glute is on the ground. So you're gonna feel a nice little stretch, and it's gonna feel a little bit uncomfortable. Hold that position for a few seconds, and then switch. I would work this into your warm-ups if you're a beginner and having a hard time sinking down to the bottom. Last thing with the body weight squat, our upper body and our torso is going to be relatively upright torso and the angle of our torso is gonna to be something that changes based on our implement. So a barbell squat, if you can imagine, is going to affect my torso angle. So see this angle? Imagine if I'm holding something here and I have to squat down like this, and then imagine my torso angle if there's a bar on my back. So that's gonna be something that's going to change based on what implement you're using. For the body weight squat, you can kind of keep your arms out in front of you work on that balance and balance over the midfoot. Keep your arms in front of you or you can just kind of get used to what a goblet squat would be like and keep your arms close to the body. A common beginner misconception is that we shouldn't ever let our knees pass our toes. So what that looks like is, and I mean, I'm pretty good here, like my knees aren't quite over my toes, but depending on your body, you might find that your knees pass your toes. Forward tracking of the knee is something that allows the torso to stay in the position that it needs to be. So I wouldn't worry about forward tracking of the knees. I would be more concerned if your knees are not staying in line with the toes. So if you notice, that your knees are coming inward, especially with a body weight squat, then that is some cause for concern. Knees passing the toes, 
not a concern. You have those fundamentals. Now we're taking those fundamentals of the body weight squat and now we're adding some load. Why would you want to add load? So that you can get stronger. Did we not know that yet? <laughs> so we want to use and implement something like a kettlebell or a dumbbell to start to build some strength and build some muscle. With the kettlebell, if you have one, you want to hold it upside down and hold it on either side. Your elbows will be close to the body and when you squat down, your elbows and arms will go in between the legs. Same kind of mechanics. We got foot contact, screwing the heels in, finding our balance over the midfoot. We're clawing our toes into the ground and then we're gonna break at the knees and hips simultaneously and squat down. When we squat down, our upper back is going to be nice and upright. We're not gonna round the upper back and our kind of upper body is not going to touch our thighs. So make sure we're not just hinging at the hip and we're not just bending at the knee, right? We're giving ourselves, doing that simultaneously to give ourselves enough room to lower all the way down. To come back up from the bottom of the squat, now you have a little bit more weight when compared to the body weight squat, I want you to think about raising and pushing that floor away from you. So kind of like a leg press, if you're at the gym and using machines, think about pressing that floor away from you to stand all the way up. Now we're finally at the bar. Before I get into the barbell squat, one thing that I wanna to touch on just briefly is breathing and bracing. You might notice when you see lifters lifting a lot of weight, they hold their breath, complete the rep, and then let out the breath at the end of the rep. It really depends on your intensity and where you are as a beginner. I just wanna clear some breathing and bracing cues up before you like advance in your experience as a lifter. You can probably breathe in on the way down and out on the way up if you wanna control your breathing. You will notice as you start to lift heavier and heavier weights, we will naturally and automatically start to hold our breath. And we'll even start to do something called a Vasava maneuver, which is where you hold your breath like that, and you kind of close this thing called a glottis in between your vocal cords. So you're stopping the breath from coming out so that you can do something called increasing intra-abdominal pressure. This might be more advanced for my complete beginners, but we wanna increase intra-abdominal pressure and maybe consider holding the breath so that our torso can be really rigid. Our torso can do all kinds of things, our spine can do all kinds of things and move all different kinds of ways, but we don't necessarily want it to do that when we have a barbell on our back, especially not a barbell on our back with a bunch of weight. To create a more rigid torso, we hold our breath, we increase that pressure in our abdominal and squat, and then we let it out. So that's a quick primer on bracing. If you're very new to it, it's something to keep in the back of your head, but maybe just continue to regulate your breath and breathe through the movement. I would breathe on the way, breathe in on the way down, and then out on the way up. So, okay, that's kind of something that we do when we are pregnant too. We've got our barbell set up. We're gonna set up the height of our bar to our mid delt. Then we're going to put the bar on our back. Now we can either choose, not to be confusing, high bar where the bar is right on our traps, or we can choose low bar. The bar is like two inches lower kind of on the rear delts. This depends, I would say maybe most lifters might want to start with high bar, experiment with that for a little bit, and then give low bar a chance after a couple of weeks. I'm a low bar squatter, so I'm gonna show you low bar because I don't have any shoes on. Why does that matter? Well, I guess I'll take the time to explain, hold on. <laughs> Remember earlier in the video when I said that in my natural squat, my knees don't really travel much farther past my toes. But what I can do is increase my ankle dorsiflexion. So I'll give myself a little heel. You can see I'm doing that here, or you can do it with lifting shoes. But when I squat down, my knees are going past my toes. If you're someone who has ankle mobility restrictions, you might wanna consider squatting with small plates under your heels, or you might even wanna consider grabbing a lifting shoe. Lifting shoes are not the cheapest thing. They're not as cheap as this option. They'll usually run you anywhere from like 60 bucks to like 120. So it's something that you could invest in, especially if you start to build a gym habit and you find that you like squatting with a heel. Typically, those who squat high bar will usually wear a lifting shoe. Those who squat low bar will usually wear a flat shoe. 
it depends but that is kind of the trend now what we're gonna do now is focus on the walkout getting the bar out of the rack so we've got our height set up we're getting under the bar and in the low bar position so my bar is on my rear delts I'm gonna get my hips under that bar and then I'm just going to stand you want to avoid unracking with your hips back here and kind of scooping the bar out that's just not the strongest position that you could get yourself in. So hips come under the bar and then you stand. That way you're not kind of gassing your back or gassing yourself. And then you're just gonna do a really simple three-step walkout. So you're gonna take one step back, another step back to meet it, and then another third step to kind of square up, okay? So let's do that walkout again. Hips right under the bar, stand, one step back, two step back to meet it, and then a third to kind of even up. Now I'm ready to squat. Right before my first rep, if I'm holding my breath and bracing, I can do that. And then I can lower down, break at the hips and knees simultaneously. And there's my rep, that's what it looks like, okay? So a couple of cues here. One thing that I want you to focus on is Brace and expand your entire abdomen out in like 360 expansion. So also help if you have a belt. So I'm going to expand, squat, and back up. It should be a fluid movement. You don't wanna pause at the bottom. There is an accessory that you can use called a pause squat, but the regular barbell squat does not incorporate a pause. So you wanna go down and straight back up. You might find that when you go low enough, you get a little bit of rebound, like a little bit of bounce out of that hole. So kind of ride that bounce if you're able to get it. Beginners, that might be hard to get a feel for. Don't worry if it's really hard for you to get below parallel. I wouldn't worry too much about getting super, super low in my squat. I would just focus on getting to at least parallel and then straight back up. So similar cues, you wanna think about pushing that floor away from you as you're coming up and then drive your upper body right back into the bar. Last thing I wanna talk about is the cue of thinking about your ribs over your pelvis. If you can figure out the relationship of the ribs over the pelvis, you'll be good for most compound movements and most exercises in general. So what I wanna see is pelvis stacked directly under the ribs. I don't wanna see a big tilt and I don't wanna see the ribs flared. You wanna kinda squeeze the glutes, tuck the hips under, a little bit of glute squeeze, and then ribs down. This will help activate the core. This will help you get into a stacked position that, so that you can squat the most weight. A lot of the other cues are gonna be similar to the other variations, the bodyweight squat and the goblet squat with some differences, but you do wanna keep that bar over the midfoot now instead of just our body weight. So think bar over the midfoot. Also think about screwing those heels in, toes clawing the ground, breaking at the knees and hips at the same time. As far as your eye gaze go, you might want to find like a speck of dust or something on the floor a couple of feet in front of you and just focus on that one kind of point so that your head is in the same spot throughout the movement. Again, our knees are tracking in the same direction as our toes. We don't want them to come inward on the way up. And that are all my cues that I have today. So this is a basic primer to help guide you from bodyweight squat through goblet squat and then to picking up a barbell. If you guys didn't know, I just released Before the Barbell, which is my program, and it's completely free. It's a 100% free program, and it's just hosted on Instagram. All you have to do is check out the page at Before the Barbell. Please do check it out. We don't even need your email or anything in exchange for the program. I'd love for you, if you're an intermediate or advanced lifter, then please do pass it along to your friends who are interested in lifting but aren't sure how to kind of take those steps that we just went through. Or if you're a beginner lifter yourself, then we would love for you to join. And yeah, that is um, the kind of beginner progression into barbell squatting. Let me know if you guys like this, if it helped you. Give the video a like and leave me a comment down below what you want to see next. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.